Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to go over how you can get the new Windows Terminal, install it and customize it with custom backgrounds, custom hotkeys and everything you're going to need to bring out the full power of this tool. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so the first thing you'll want to do is head on over to the Microsoft Store as it's the easiest way to install Windows Terminal. It'll always make sure that it's up to date. So you just head on over to the search bar and just search for Windows Terminal. And then uh, you find it there on the list here. And we can just go get and it will start the installation. And you can see that it's downloading here. And now Windows Terminal is installed and it's as easy as that. So I'll go ahead and launch it. So here it is right here. So if I hit the plus sign here, it's going to add additional PowerShell terminals. And if you click the Chevron here, you can see that you can launch Command Prompt. You can also do a Linux Bash Shell. Now this is the Windows Bash Shell. So you have all the bash commands available to you with this. You also have the Azure Cloud Shell. Also, because it's open source, you will have the ability to add different types of terminals in here, like the AWS console and everything like that. I won't show that in this particular video, but maybe a video down the road. We're just going to be going over the basic features of getting started with Windows Terminal here. All right, so the next thing we're going to go over is how we can customize our Windows Terminal. We want to go over themes, setting backgrounds, setting colors, setting keybinds, as well as the default keybinds. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll want to do is you can hit the Chevron sign here and then go on over to the settings. And this is going to pop open a settings.json file. So this is the file we're going to be editing. Uh, I don't like using Notepad. I'm going to use a code editor. Um, but if you want to just make these same changes that I'm making, directly in notepad that's fine that'll work for what we're doing I just find that it looks a lot nicer when I open this up in Visual Studio it colorizes everything and just makes the video a little bit easier to follow so I'll go ahead and jump into the directory that this file is stored at so this is the default directory that Microsoft Terminal stores all its configuration and settings in I have this directory in the description below so you can copy and paste it into Windows Explorer and get there yourself and that actual settings file that we are looking to edit is in local state. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Visual Studio Code. But again, you can just make the change directly in Notepad if you'd like to. So the first thing you probably notice with this file is this first line right here that says schema. And if you open this up in a browser, you will see a bunch of JSON data come back. And basically what this is, is all the default settings for Windows Terminal. So if you ever need to find out what the default setting is, if you go to this link and then have a look, you will see what the default is. So good information just to know how to get there, but you'll likely just leave this the same. And the next thing you should know is everything up here is sort of the global section of the configuration. So if you make a change up here, it will be affecting all the terminal types. But if you go down into the profiles below, that's where you're going to make the specific changes to Windows PowerShell or Command Prompt, for example. So as you can see here, it is a list. And this list corresponds exactly to what you see in Windows Terminal. So you can see it says Windows PowerShell, Command Prompt, legacy which means like the Windows bash shell and then Azure and if you have a look here you can see that's the exact order now if I were to change the order of this list and put PowerShell at the bottom need to add that extra comma and take this one out you can see it changed the order of that so we can see command prompt at the top and Windows PowerShell at the bottom also you can see that there is a hotkey for this, so Control shift one adds a tab of Command Prompt, but Control shift four is PowerShell. These hotkeys are based on the order. Originally, Control shift one was PowerShell, but since I've moved it to the bottom, now Control shift four is PowerShell. So if you want to change the order of any of your terminals, maybe you use Command Prompt a lot, or Azure a lot, you want to put them up top, it's very easy to make that change. 
So the next easy thing to do to customize your Windows Terminal experience is to set a theme. So if we just pop on over and we can choose any of these ones, I'm going to make the change to PowerShell down here. So in quotations, I'm going to say color scheme. And then we'll do a colon. And then I can choose from one of the five default color schemes. And the one I'm going to choose is one half dark. And this one's my favorite color scheme to use. There's about five default ones that you can choose from. I have a link up above to a video that shows off the five different color schemes if you want to check them out. There's also ways to download different color schemes. I'll probably do another video on that one, how you can download and set up a bunch of different ones. But I think one half dark should be pretty good for most people. And I'm going to add the comma here so we don't get any errors. And now let's pull this up. And I have autosave on, on Visual Studio Code, so I got the error, but once I click OK, everything's fine. Now, you can see that the color scheme has changed. I always go with a dark theme, but I, I like this gray color that they have. As well as when you type, you get sort of this orangish color. I think that's orange. I'm a little colorblind. But it looks like our font is a little small. So let's go ahead and hop back into the settings file and change the font to something a bit larger. So we're back in the configuration, and we can see that a font size isn't specified here. So it's just using a default. Let's go ahead and add a font size. So it's font size and make sure you have the camel casing where the S is capitalized and then we'll go 18 and then comma let this open and you can see that's a little bit bigger but it's still a little small for me so let's go 22 So now that our Windows Terminal is looking nice, let's go ahead and go over the default keybinds. So I'll expand this. So the first set we've already been over, and that's the Control Shift 1, 2, 3, and 4, and basically it corresponds with the terminal type. So if I go Control Shift 1, I'm getting a command prompt, Control Shift 2, a legacy shell, and Control Shift 4. I'm getting my PowerShell terminal. And again, that's because I changed the order of where PowerShell showed up on the list. I changed it from number one down to number four, so now Control Shift 4 opens up the PowerShell. The next one to know is Control Shift W, and this will close a tab. So I hit it once there, and it controlled PowerShell. I hit it again, closed my Bash shell, and then once again to close the Azure shell. So Control Shift W, very good. Let's open a few more tabs here. I'll just go Control Shift 1 a few times. And if I go Control Shift Tab, you can see that I can tab through them quite nicely here. Now, if I wanted to change the font size because it was a little small or it was too big, I can just go Control Plus to make it larger or Control Minus to make it smaller. So pretty similar to what you would do with Chrome or anything like that. And it's a good way to make the change without having to open up the settings.json file. But as you can see, that change is temporary, and if I go on over to one of my other tabs, I still have the smaller font there. So if you want a default set for every time you open up a new terminal, uh, make sure you make that change in the settings.json file. Now, the next really cool feature that Windows Terminal supports is what is called panes. And it's easier to just show you what a pane is than to describe it. So if I go Alt, Shift, and the plus sign, you can see that it split the terminal into two in the vertical direction, but if I do Alt Shift minus, it splits it horizontally. And you can basically do this as many times as you want it. And if you see the blue highlighted border, that's the active pane that it will be splitting. So if I want to split this one on the left, I'll just click here. And uh, you can see Windows Terminal crashed, so you probably don't want to split it too many times. Let's uh, reopen Windows Terminal. and do Alt Shift plus, plus a few times. But if I wanted to split this first one, I would click it, make sure I see that blue border, and then do Alt Shift minus and split that one. So very cool feature that I use all the time, especially when making one of these videos or doing a presentation, any type of training, or just troubleshooting on your own. It's so good to have an active window you can have typing while another window is trailing some logs. So this is a feature that I use all the time and I suggest 
everyone starts using it. It's just an overall huge selling point for Windows Terminal. Now if you find you've opened too many panes and you have some horrific mess like I've made here, you can do the Control shift w and that will close the panes one by one. And once, let me actually, and let me actually open another tab here to demonstrate this better. But once you close the last pane, that's when it closes the tab. So yeah, make sure you use the Control shift w to work with your panes. It uh, makes it really convenient to get them up and down. So another shortcut that you'll probably be using every day is the find shortcut. Um, let's get some output here. So I'll just do ls, and you can see that there's a big list of files. Let's say I was looking for something in particular. All I would have to do is go control shift f, and I have my find prompt here, and then I can find anything I want. And it doesn't look like I have Python installed, but if I go help, I can see it highlights help right there. So yeah, you'll probably use that a lot if you're looking through logs or anything and looking for a specific keyword. It's very convenient just to have the find function built into the terminal itself. It's a very quick, easy, and dirty way of doing things, but it works perfectly and it's going to save you a lot of time. And then probably the last thing that I use quite often is Control shift up and that's just to scroll through. Not that big of a deal, but it's probably worth mentioning. Now you do have the option to set your own keybinds or change the default ones. So let me pull up the settings.json file and let's change how some of these hotkeys work. The first one in particular, instead of doing control shift W, let's just change that to control W. So to do that is very simple. We just hop into this file and then we will look at the bottom here. And then in this key binding section is where we set all our key bindings. And you can see that it looks like they give you a few examples here at how it works. So that last one that we just went through, the find command, you can see that it's running the command find. And the keys to do that is control shift F. If you wanted to change that to just control F, you could go like this. And now if you hop on over to command prompt and just go control F, you can see the find dialog pops up. You don't have to hit the shift which is very convenient because that's how most applications work. Now let's go ahead and copy this, add it again, and I want to actually change this command to close tab, and I'm going to say control W. Now I hop back in, let me get a few tabs open, so control W, now it closes them. Perfect. So that's how you make changes to the basic type of commands. Now there's a second type of commands which has options and you can see that it's built like this. So instead of just having a command name, it's sending a dictionary of the command settings. So the action is split pane and the split option is set to auto, split mode to duplicate. And they have that set to control shift D. What I'm actually gonna do here is steal this because I want a similar formatted command. Um, and and the command I'm building is instead of doing alt shift plus to open up a new pane, I want it set to control shift plus, which is a much easier command sequence to hit. It makes a lot more sense to me. I always have trouble with the alt shift commands for some reason. I just, they just don't stick in my mind as much. So I want to change the keybind for that. So I'm going to add a few lines here and just have this out in the open. And let's add a comma here. Now the command I want to use is split pane, but I actually want different options here. So I'm going to take these out and I'm going to add in argument. And the value of the argument that I want is going to be vertical. And the key bind is going to be control plus shift and it's going to be control shift but not a plus, it's going to be an equal sign. I'm also going to add a second line here, since I want the split pane horizontal option as well. So I'll change this to horizontal, and I'm going to put the minus sign. And this looks good, so let's open up our terminal. We'll hit OK. And now when I go Control Shift Plus, I see that works, and Control Shift Minus, that works as well. So that's how easy it is to customize your keybinds. And if you're interested in making more keybinds or changing more of the defaults, 
If you go onto the Microsoft Terminal GitHub page, you can find all the command options as well as the arguments that you can send to it. So if you just follow the formula that I set here, you should be able to customize any of the commands. Now the next thing we should do is set up a custom background. So the first thing you're going to want to do is choose a background and once you have the background you want to hop on over to this location again and again this is in the description below if you want to grab that location and put it in on your station and then within here I like to go to the roaming state and you can see that I have an image here let's actually rename that and I'm just gonna rename it to BG1 and then I'll hop on over to my settings and then I'm going to scroll up, and I just want this for my PowerShell prompt. So I'm going to add a comma here, and then at the very bottom, I'm going to add a few lines. And let me just make sure this lines up nicely. So you can see that it's using this path, and I want to actually change this to BG1. And I think this was a PNG. Yeah, it's a PNG, so not a JPEG. But you can see that it's using this path, roaming, so... So that equates to this roaming state. So that equates to this roaming state path. So just make sure you have that part the same. And then whatever your file is called, just make sure that that part's in there. And then you can set the opacity. So I have mine set at dot one. And I want my image to be aligned with the bottom right. And then the stretch mode to be uniform. And the other options for this is none, fill, uniform, or uniform to fill. So let's see how this looks. And you can see I have my DevOps journey background here. Feel free to use any image that you like or change the opacity. I actually think the opacity level is a little too much here. So I'm going to go 0, 0.5. Well, let's go 0, 0.2, 5. And you can see it's a little lighter. And yeah, just enough to sort of peek through. So use your favorite image. Popular options are puppy dogs or some coffee or something like that. But yeah, just a very cool feature of Windows Terminal to customize it. One last thing that I'd like to show is if you would like to change the color of the background without using a theme, you can just do that with the background option. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like, let me change it on my side here. So I'm going to put a comma and then background and then I'm using the hash value. Oh, I changed it there. Let me paste that in again. And you can see that's gonna be sort of a dark blue. So when I pull this up, it okay. It gives me the old school PowerShell bluish background. So, so I like that, so I'm probably gonna use that. And you can see that the text color is still using that theme that I used. It's just that I've customized the background color. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I highly recommend that you use Windows Terminal. Microsoft is very excited about this product, and it's just sort of showing you how Microsoft is opening themselves up to go, to go a more open source route. Your terminal is something you use every day if you're in the DevOps world or networking world. So yeah, it's just something that you should do. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see similar content to this, please subscribe. Other than that, have a great day, everyone.